Hey there, welcome to Authentically Raw. I'm your host, Jamie Darris. Tasso, Tasso's Coats, yes. How did I do? Okay, it's perfect. <laughs> Very good. Perfect. <laughs> welcome to the Authentically Raw podcast. How are you? Hey, I'm fine. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited for our conversation because it resonates with all women at some point in their lives or maybe all of the time. And this conversation is not just for women, it is for men too. And my hopes for the men that are listening is that they can have an understanding of the concerns that women have when it comes to living, and I take this in quotes, Tassos, these are your words, but I do agree with them, a male-dominated world. And a little bit about you, Tassos, before we dive into our conversation is, yes, you are a husband and a father of two two kids, and you are a women empowerment coach, and you did not start out in this role, but you quickly just naturally fell into it. After 25 years in the corporate world, you found you were on the receiving end of your women colleagues coming to you and mostly asking, how do I handle blank. Often these women were in tears, very frustrated, trying to figure out the work-life balance. They were feeling very beaten down and not valued by their male colleagues. They were struggling with salary issues. They were struggling with boundaries at work and at home and how to balance the two of those. They were not taking care of themselves. They were trying to be in these leadership roles and yet being pulled in so many different directions of their lives found it really challenging. And it was chipping and eating away at their self-esteem, their self-confidence, their self-worth, and really catching up lots of anxiety and stress and depression, obviously coming from all of these feelings. And I think I completely would have been one of these women in your office crying if we were colleagues because I too feel that and I feel so many women feel that pull. If you are succeeding in one area, it's almost like you're a failure in another area. And I was even feeling a little bit like this today, the past three weeks, uh, five-day school weeks, so 15 school days, Seven of those days, I have had a child home sick, which means something has to give. So if I stay at home with my daughter, then I'm either wiping my whole schedule clean or I'm rearranging my schedule. Luckily, being able to work from home, I was able to keep this podcast interview and I have another one right after you. I did have to cancel uh, another outside appointment out of the house, a client appointment, and there are several emails, several commitments, all all sorts of things actually that I just will not be able to get to today. And it does bring up those, it, it does bring up some stress. It brings up a little anxiety and I feel even guilt because I don't, I don't even want to feel that way. My heart is with my sick daughter. I am a nurturer. I am a caregiver. I love her. I want to be with her when she is sick. And I think of so many women. What if I were a surgeon? What if I'm in corporate America? I cannot, I'm in the operating room. I cannot leave my position. So I would have to have someone home with her. I wasn't able to rearrange my schedule or wipe my, my day clean And often we are left with so much guilt. We feel like we are succeeding at work, failing at home, succeeding at home, failing at work. I remember years ago having dinner with a couple friends and one of the women stated she feels like she is half-assing everything. She said she puts in all the effort she can at work, but often feels like it's never enough. She puts in so much effort at home just trying to keep a household running and feels like it's never enough. She's always putting in all the effort she can being a mom and feels like it's never enough. How do you really keep the flame alive at home when you are just exhausted and you have nothing left to give your husband at the end of the day? She even said, and this was years ago, I remember this. Even tonight, my husband was annoyed with me that I went out. I had to arrange a ride for one kid. I missed out on a game 
you know, for another kid. And he thought I should be there. I haven't seen my friends. I wanted to do that. I ended up having to leave early, work early today for my kid's orthodontist appointment. And I could tell a coworker was annoyed with that. I get it. We throw our arms up in the air after a while because we feel overwhelmed and stressed out and everybody's still upset with us. And we do. We we get stuck in that cycle and it's frustrating. So I get it. I get why these women ended up in your office crying because we feel like whatever choice we make in one area, we aren't measuring up in another area or we're completely neglecting things that are often really important to us in life. I even think about how women we shove ourselves and our interests, things that really fulfill us on the back burner because we are primary caregivers and nurturers and then you add on you know work and all these other areas in life and how do you make time for your own self-care how do you show up for your physical health your mental health your emotional health your spiritual health how do you make it to the gym how do you go to book club and just socialize with other people how do you volunteer at something that pulls at your heartstrings that feels very important to you it feels near impossible so my question to start right off is what what else do you notice and what do we do about this it is almost like an epidemic i feel i noticed that most of the women it's about acceptance, what they are facing, but also men eh? and also men. It's not only about women; eh? it's also about men. They, they, what they need is acceptance. Mm-hmm. What they need is recognition, and support, appreciation. And through these, once they have these, then they can start. And we all, all of us, we can start building resilience. And once we build the resilience, then we can really transform then we can really transform. Then we can really identify who we are. Then we can really identify what we want to do, what we want to achieve, what legacy we, we want to leave, uh, to leave back, you know, and how we can provide, how we can support the society, uh, the community, the world, the earth, whoever, whatever, you know, the um, impact we may have. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And I feel that so many women, it's, the word inadequate kind of kept popping up for me because it's tough sometimes to speak up and really have a voice. And I, I, I'm sure you probably found that out a lot <laughs> with no. women. And, you know, it, it's like you said about the recognition and the acceptance and the appreciation. And I, when you're being pulled in so many different directions and you feel like you're never really a hundred percent, you're just not able necessarily to show up as that authentic you and, and really give what you're capable of giving because you're just, I feel like we feel like we're bouncing all over all the time. And, and you do feel like that. Yeah. I work so hard at so many different things and, you know, maybe you're not being recognized enough at work or at home or maybe in your community, Uh, you know, how do you, how do you go about that? Because it, it, it does go back to asking the question. I like that you brought up leaving the legacy and really maybe getting in tune with yourself. Well, what, what legacy am I trying to leave. I did an interview a while ago about that. It's, you know, really getting in tune with your living legacy. You know, if you were going to leave a legacy, it's more of what is the legacy you want to leave of who you are, what you represented, what you stood for. And I don't think anyone really wants to leave the legacy that they just ran around feeling inadequate, you know, frazzled, not really present any place and not fully for some reason the word you know successful comes up because there is that level of am i am i showing up successfully in all of these different places and we measure it in so many different ways you know we measure it a different way in our home and at work we measure it a different way maybe it's your position or how well you're respected or the pay scale 
a title. I mean, even just, and even in your community, it's how do, you know, if someone comes to you like that, you know, where do you begin? How do you start to kind of unravel well, and build yes. that? Yeah. Um, well, you know, for me, it's, uh, I start with unpacking. I start with unpacking and breaking down and breaking down all this because, you know, what you, what you just described is a lot of things that I, a person, I try, let's say, to be successful in a lot of things. You mentioned about su uh, success. You mentioned about inadequacy you, or being, in, being enough or being accepted. You mentioned about how I can do all these things at the same time. So it's a lot of different, a lot of different values there here, here. One value, for example, would be how do I perceive my time? What do I do about my time and my energy? Where do I invest my time and my energy? Right? Because I'm doing a, a Qigong, as I told you, you know, energy for me, for example, is very, very significant. How, where do I dedicate myself? How I, how I invest my energy and to what I invest my energy? For how long I invest my energy? Mm -hmm. So, so it's about time management. It's about limitations. Understanding that we all have limitations. Also, about it's about perfectionism, mm -hmm. right? If we want to be perfect in everything, successful in everything, that's a dream. It's not going to happen. It will never happen. It's impossible. Everyone, even the even the most success successful people in brackets successful, right? That we consider them to be successful for sure. They've let out. They've let go, on, let go on a lot of things, a lot of um, a, a lot of um, subjects or responsibilities that they are not important to them. So then, the next question to you would be: What is really important to you? To focus your time and your energy. And you know, I have an exercise here for you, and I think it's it's a nice, it's a very interesting uh, time here now to share this exercise. If you if you're okay with that, and if you if you will give me one minute, it's only one minute exercise, right? Absolutely. Are you going to ask yes. me some questions? Uh oh. No, no, no. I'm not asking. I'm not asking okay. questions. I will just explain to you the exercise very quickly for you and for your uh, for your for all the listeners because I think I really th this is how I start usually my coaching agreement with someone when I do like a, an intro or consultation call. This is how I start. So I ask them, take a piece of paper. It's a very simple exercise, but extremely difficult at the same time right so you take an a an a4 let's say size paper a piece of paper blank paper and you just split it in two and on the left side you start start you start writing of course you need some time to do that because you need to focus you need to be relaxed you need to be on your core on your center you know you need to be maybe have a glass of wine or a tea or a coffee whatever some makes you feel nice right so you start on the left column and you start writing the things, the tasks, the priorities, whatever it is that you feel that are important for you. And you say, what would be the most important things in my life? What would be the things that if I could change or if I could work on or if I could develop or if I could invest my time and my energy could make an impact in my life, could make a considerable impact in my life? Because you know the rule of Pareto, right? 80-20. You know the 20-80 rule, you know? I invest... 20% 20, 20 of my time and I get 80% of the results. I invest 20% of my energy, I get 80% of the result. I invest 20% of my money and sometimes I get 80% of the return. You know, so the Pareto works all over the place. So the same thing here. If I would ask you, write five, the five most important things in your life on the left column and you manage to do that, Maybe you write 20 in the beginning, 30. You start erasing, deleting, you know, the, um, scrapping the paper, throwing it, start again from the from uh, all over all over from the beginning. But let's say you manage to get five. Let's say you manage to get five, right? In an order or without an order, doesn't doesn't matter so much. Go to the right side now and try to reply to this question. Why is each single of this so important for you? And then again, after three months and after six months, you have to reflect back again. Yeah. And then after three months, you have to reflect back and reevaluate, reassess, reassess. Say, yes, it's true. Yes, I'm there. This is what who I am. This is my biggest value. This is my strongest value. This is what I where I need to invest 
my time, my energy? Is it my family? Is it my husband? Is it my kids? Is it my work? What is it? Is it myself, first of all? Mm -hmm. Because here you are touching, you're touching, right? You're touching issues of self-care, of boundaries, of guilt, of uh, perfectionism, of uh, a lot of things. So how do you think about the exercise? <laughs> oh, I love this because, and here's the thing, and a couple, so many things on this actually. The first thing is that I want to point out real quick is that this is continual. I think so many people, number one, we never sit down and actually take the time to do this, which this is self-care. And don't get me wrong, bubble baths, massages, pedicures, blah, blah, blah. That's all you hear about, you know, in society for self-care. This is self-care. Yeah. Sitting down with pen and paper, I like to call it developing a better relationship with yourself, connecting with yourself, because I, I, I say this all the time, we, it's really easy to become completely disconnected with our, with ourselves. And that is probably how most of these women <laughs> ended up speaking to you. You know, they, you, you just get so disconnected with what, who you are on the inside and all these signals of what your body is telling you what to do and you're constantly fighting against yourself and it's why we feel so burnt out and miserable and this kind of puts it right in you know what what is really at my core you know i think i i think a lot of even just like you know your values you know what are you living for who are you what's really important all of that stuff and i was able to just to throw things out right away this is so easy for me to throw it out i'll say what they are my big ones are meaningful connections with people um i like connecting deep i like conversations like this i love it and i like sharing it with other people um and i just like talking deep it's who i am <laughs> that's one and to have a purpose i i need a purpose and i think for so many years, I was predominantly a stay at home mom. And I did not feel 100% fulfilled just doing that. And I felt guilty for saying I need more of a purpose than just taking care of my kids. Mm -hmm. And I felt I've worked through that. <laughs> I no longer feel that way. And I realize now by fulfilling a purpose by, you know, doing what I do, I am giving, you know, on a, obviously a gift to myself, but more of a gift to my family and my kids for sure. Cause I'm, I'm a better person. I'm a better mom, a better wife, a better friend all around. So the meaningful connections, but purpose and really tapping into what makes me feel fulfilled. And then my health is very important, whether it's my physical health, mental, emotional, spiritual, all those things. And I think it's really easy for women to just put all that stuff on the back burner. You know, I'll take care of myself when everyone else is taken care of. And that day's never going to come. Yes. It will come maybe when you're under the knife, <laughs> right? Getting surgery or, you know, you're sick on the couch because you're just wore out or you're in or therapy something, or something very very dramatic gets happening exactly yes. and i think so much of us and i'm not going to go down the road of whether we should or shouldn't be on you know um medication for things but i think so many of us we can avoid so much of that stuff if we stop and take the time to take care of our mental health and our emotional health by going to just see i mean there's so many people you could go see a therapist just to stay it's to stay healthy it's not because you're in a crisis you can like i love to go do yoga and oh i don't have time because my family needs me my work needs me and when you're you know or if it's a walk outside in nature or reading a book or you know playing the music in in the house and shutting yourself off in a room for 10 minutes dancing I do that now <laughs> it, it, there's, it's these simple little things that we can do to take care of ourselves that allow us to show up as better people so those were like some of the things and i think just just leaving yeah really looking at it's important to me now to leave a living legacy of who i'm going to be and with the why part i think that this is just that that list the hardest thing I bet you see, um, and this is my my struggle, is we. Why do we feel so guilty for this 
this is what is so important to us yes. these meaningful connections and having a purpose and making sure i'm fulfilled and really taking care of my health these things are so important to me and i see all the benefits it has for myself and everybody around me but how easily i give this stuff up and push it off to the side and get laser focused on doing something else it that pull is strong and how do we stay in line? And I would like you to talk maybe boundaries just picked up for me because I know when I get straight, it's my weak boundaries. It's not, it's not having the self-discipline for myself, but it's saying yes to things that really inside I want to say no to. So what do you see on that <laughs> or your take on that? On, on, the, on the boundaries or on the guilt part? <laughs> I think they're pretty, they're, they're woven in because the thing is, is the guilt is an emotion inside of us that, you know, what, when we put boundaries in place, when we have these boundaries, we're going to feel some guilt. And so often, at least for me, it was the guilt that I couldn't deal with that made me have these weak boundaries. Mm -hmm. And yes. so finally being like okay you know it's it's the guilt i actually have to deal with and and work through and then i can actually have better boundaries i mean they're, they're kind of interwoven but i think guys are better at dealing with their guilt than women number one and having stronger boundaries it's tough for women yes it's tough for many people it's tough for many people because even for clients uh, male clients that i have we're facing exactly same issues and same challenges maybe with different different intensity let's say right mm -hmm. or but it's they are quite similar but in going back to the guilt what you just mentioned as you know guilt is coming can come of course from uh, our childhood and our parents so if this is a, a deep uh, emotion there the coming from that from then then we need really need to go to a therapist or a counselor right to be able to dig deeper on that and then a coach can help us can help us can support us you know to see okay what i'm facing now and what i really want to change as we said before who i am what i want to achieve etc cetera, etc cetera, to the future going to the future and how can i become accountable because this is the, the main difference with a the therapist but going back to the going back to the guilt that, that we are feeling now and how this relates to the boundaries my feeling is that my feeling is that and now, now i'm opening up another big chapter here i think right <laughs> and i would like to question you actually on that do you think it's self, do you think it's selfish if you take care of yourself i do not think it is at all. I used to. I do mm -hmm. not anymore. But I will admit that I often feel guilty for it. I still do. I will do it. And I'm, I'm very aware that I am doing this. And I'm also feeling guilty. I know I should not feel guilty for this. I know I'm not doing anything wrong right now. What I'm doing is not selfish, but I'm still feeling it and I'm working through that. And like you said, I mean, this is something that is, it's deeply ingrained from like way back in our childhoods. And I am working on that. Um, and yeah, I but think- I, I, But I challenge you, I challenge you on purpose so that our listeners and our attendees can start understanding the difference between being selfish and being selfless. Yeah. Because here, here is a big topic. This is a big topic for me, and it's really directly connected to uh, if we feel guilt or not when we're trying to do things, and when when we believe that we take time for ourselves, not for our kids, for example, right? Which is very strong feeling. And we say, yeah. okay, my seven-year-old daughter, your ten-year-old daughter, is waiting for dad and mom, whatever you know, to have some fun, to watch a movie, to eat together, to do a homework, or I don't know what, to go for a ride, and all this. And dad or mom, they are not present because maybe they're in the gym, or maybe they have a, a one-hour coaching session, or maybe because you know they have some something important for them to do. And then uh, parents are feeling guilt about that. Okay, but. That's why, that's why I ask you, is it selfish to take care of ourselves? My question, my reply to that, my reply to that, that of course we all feel guilt, guilty about that. However, 
if what I'm doing, it's it seems to be selfish to third people, to th outside persons. It seems to be selfish for me. But if I do this, I get the time and the energy and the focus and the clarity, right? And the physical, mental, or emotional, spiritual awareness or well-being to be more present and more focused and more productive and more efficient and more energetic with my children when I am with them or with my wife when I'm with her or with my parents when I am with them or with my friends when I'm with them, then who's selfish? Then what is selfish? Yeah, agree. So, mm -hmm. so, so, so I think the reply here would be this one. If someone feels guilt about that, really needs to identify and really needs to co even communicate that to the other to the other people to the family for example or to the employees or to the colleagues in the, the in the in the in the company or in the organization that they're working in you know i'm doing something for myself because if i don't do this i will not feel good if i don't de do this i will not be happy and if i don't feel good and i'm not feel happy then everyone will, be, everyone will be miserable, especially especially in the case of mothers, because if a mother if a mother in a household in a, at a home she's not feeling well, and she's not feeling grounded, present, and she does not feel, you know, in the in essence happy or joy every day, then she cannot be happy for anyone or no one, and no one will be happy at home. The husband will be complaining. The husband will be at distance. Will have distance from the from the wife. The the kids will feel will feel that oh, mom is not present, cannot support us, etc. And then you'll have all this conflict, family conflict, uh, inside your own home. So, for me, this is number one priority for everyone. Everyone it doesn't matter if it's the mother or the father. It's number one priority. I agree, and I feel that as as a mom we really do set the tone of the house. You know, even if you don't 100%. have kids, I, just, I feel like there's something about the that female presence. We, I've noticed that among females, how we really, we really can influence the tone. There's just that, that vibe. And, and if it's your tone isn't good inside of inside yourself to start, it's that energy. It's, the vibration that you're that you're projecting out and if it's not good in here if you're not taking care of yourself then that energy that you're projecting is it's either negative or it's just uh, negative i'm going to sum it up with negative there's there's positive yes. and negative energy. i'm going to keep it right there neg negative is enough <laughs> you don't need more yeah it sums <laughs> it all up doesn't it <laughs> yeah, exactly so, yeah and not not only that we have to consider also the side effects and the future effects right because if i live a life that every single moment every single day i wake up in the morning and i'm not happy i'm not joyful i'm not enjoying my day and in the evening when i go to bed i sleep and i cannot sleep because i have guilt or i cannot sleep because i'm stressed or i cannot sleep because i have a lot of thoughts worrying thoughts or fears or phobias whatever which are created because i'm not feeling centered and because i'm not feeling balanced and because i'm not feeling happy then Imagine in five years from now, in 10 years from now, in 20 years from now, what will be happening to my health? Because any, any mental, any, any mental, any emotional aspect, you know, that really, really suppress, we suppress every day, every minute that we suppress it, it's hitting in our physicality right away. It can take maybe two months, it can take it can make 20 it can take 20 years it doesn't matter it will show up it will show I up agree. so what do we do about that well and we store everything and i don't think you know many of us are really really aware of you know just the minor aches and pains that we have how you know we always are like oh well my neck hurts you know because i'm i'm on my computer all day and sure that is part of it that's not all of it you know, why are you so tensed and, you know, stressed exactly. when you're on it? And how long are you on it? Are you giving yourself breaks? Are you, you know, whether it's your back, your gut, um, you yes, know. Yes, and everyone, all of us, all of us have their weak, their weakest, their weak point, right? Maybe yeah. my weak point is my stomach. 
maybe your weak point is your neck, as you say. Maybe someone else is, is the the, uh, the lungs or the kidneys. It doesn't matter. Everyone, everyone, all of us, they have a weak organ, a weak organ, a weak point. And this mm-hmm. is scientifically, not only scientifically proven, but also traditionally proven for thousands of years. You know, from the ancient Chinese, also the Greeks, you know, and the, the, all the different civilizations that has been proven before the Western medicine, the Western science comes in comes in play right so we have to be aware of all this it's not that okay uh 200 years past 500 years past in the civilization and all of a sudden we became super healthy and super of course we live longer we live longer because of diet because of the because of science because of nutrition yes but at the same time when we are suppressing feelings and emotions and thoughts then this is dangerous and it doesn't necessarily mean that since we're living longer that our quality of life is any better because in a lot of cases it's not and i have researched all of you know the the different organs you know what we store in this and that um you know what it means you know your liver your lungs your stomach all of this it's fascinating for one and i encourage people to research some of this stuff because it's an it's an eye opener even you know i've i've read a lot of things about heart attacks and stuff how you know it's like your heart and whether you can fully experience love and joy and a heart attack is not necessarily just because you eat cholesterol a lot or you know you've got a bad diet or you're sedentary absolutely it plays a part in it but it is you know what's going on it's inside ener- it's energetic it's energetic and of course it's energetic because mm-hmm. the and mental, it, this is proven in the Chinese traditional medicine is proven, you know, whatever in, uh, energetic blockages you have, which are created by either by mental thoughts, difficult thoughts, or by emotions, it block, it, they, are, it, they are blocking energetically the organs. And when you have these energetic blockages in these organs, in any organs, this is the worst that can happen because the, okay, for the Chinese it's called qi and the way the energy flow and everything, but in the end it's about energy. So, so this is this is very crucial for us to understand, for all of us to understand that even even whenever something happens that triggers a strong emotion or a negative emotion or a really strong emotion, either positive sometimes, some also sometimes on extreme positive, that's not healthy because it's not balanced. Of course, it's one time it doesn't matter, or ten times it doesn't matter. But if it's continuous, continuous negative emotions, continuous negative thoughts or continuous hyper hyper reaction of what, whatever kind, then this is not healthy because it's not balanced. Because right. in the end, we are talking about balance in everything, mm-hmm. right? Absolutely. And it's everybody is different on, you know, what balance looks like for them or what it feels like, what, what makes them feel grounded and centered. And, you know, even just speaking of the organs, like I can pinpoint when I feel my emotions i carry it all in my stomach you know and that i've had all kinds of gut issues over the years and i'm at a place now the last few years where i just wow i've grown leaps and bounds and a lot of it has simply went away and this is something i struggled with for a very long time very intense and it's it's empowering but it's also a way to get in tune with your body and center yourself in the moment when all of this stuff comes up, you know, what am I feeling right now? Where am I feeling it? And to start to work through that. And, and those are things that everybody in this world, no matter what, you know, your, your role, your position, your gender, where you live, whatever, to just go inward a little bit and get back to your body. It's so healing and it's powerful though like it's getting back to the source of your own power and your own energy because we, it, this is the world we live in we're pulled all over the place now yes, and yes to just take this time for ourselves and i think when we do our quality of life uh, is so much better so much yes. better so I do want to point out, I've been thinking, so my husband is Greek. Oh, <laughs> really? Is- wow, amazing. <laughs> you didn't tell me. So I'm going to have to make sure, yeah, he listens to this. That's great. And I love the fact I've been, I've been able to hear your kids in the background. And I have one home 
sick today and she's been playing the music and I can hear the little thump thump of Pitbull in the background. <laughs> and I just, I love the fact that, you know, we can still do this. They're doing that. It's real life. And not for one second would I ever edit any of that background noise out because it just goes to show. I mean, I don't know what, what comes up in you, but had had that happened when I first started my podcast, I would have gotten off and been like, you guys, come on. <laughs> yes. I, I be quiet. Now I just laugh. This is yes, it. This is real yeah, life. I, I, totally Dude, I gotta deal with it right now. It does it make me feel a little bit anxious? Yes. Why? Big deal. There might yeah, be you might we, hear we, some thumping new music. You might hear Pitbull thumping in the background. I guess she's feeling better, right? <laughs> that would be great. <laughs> yeah, in the in the in the end, as you said, this is life, right? And what we are doing, it doesn't matter. I mean, we have to integrate. This is now you're giving me a very good uh, a very good pass here. It's a, isn't it about work life integration in the end and not work life balance? Because this yeah. is exactly what you're describing is work life integration. It's how we can have our professions, your profession or my profession right now, discussing professionally, right? For uh, for uh, to give, provide value and provide service to our uh, listeners and our attendees. And at the same time, we have our families next door in the next room, you know, doing their stuff, maybe watching movies, maybe playing, doing, doing their stuff. But isn't it this integration? And I know once I finish with you now, I will go have dinner with them, you know, I will discuss, I will enjoy the time with them. Then they will go to bed because it's a bit late here today anyway. <laughs> right? But this is uh, this is uh, integration and this is how we should also plan in our lives, I think, more and more. More and more because it's, I think, at least to me, it sounds healthier. Tassel, this has been a fabulous conversation. It's, it's left me with so many so many grounding things and it, it's just been very empowering so i thank you so much for your time and, and your expertise as well i appreciate that uh, jamie all the best all the best thank you thank you thank you so much for listening to authentically raw i'd love to hear from you shoot me an email jamie at jamiebarris.com and let me know what episodes resonate with you and why are you a people pleaser if so i need your help please i'm writing a book about people pleasing titled The People Pleaser's Guide to Pissing People Off to improve your relationships, especially the one you have with yourself. And I'm looking for personal stories of how people pleasing has impacted your life or sucked the life out of you. Maybe people pleasing has held you back, caused you to feel resent, regret, anger, powerlessness, or just plain exhaustion. Let me know how it's impacted your life. Who knows, maybe your story will inspire my writing and grace the pages in some shape or form in this handy dandy little guide. Also, if you enjoy the authentically raw content, please support the show by following and leaving a review on Apple Podcasts. Simply scroll down through the episodes and you will see where to do so. Want to learn more about life coaching? Head over to my website, jamiebarris.com and check it out. You can also follow me on social media at Jamie Barris for lots of inspiration and empowerment. One last thing, I'm rooting for you. Be real, be raw, be authentic.